I just mentioned the Australian dollar there. It may not have moved enough for the manufacturing sector, but its recent weakening could improve the performance of some listed companies. So are these companies currently below the radar and perhaps a little undervalued? Well, I'm joined by fund manager Roger Montgomery. Roger, welcome. Thank you, Tiggy. Uh, now, you believe there are a few of these companies but below the radar. What is the story and, and how can companies boost profits? Well, you have, to have, you have to have the view, obviously, that the Australian dollar will continue to fall. That's very important. But what you want to do is you want and to... And do you believe that, by the way? Yes. In, in fact, I should declare my hand. I moved our family's term deposits out of, out of Australian dollars into British pounds and Singapore dollars and US dollars quite some time ago. So um, I am talking my book here. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I do believe the Australian dollar could weaken substantially further. In order for it to encourage investment in Australia, it will have to stay down um, in the manufacturing space and the export space. But there are listed businesses that will do well, and particularly those businesses that have overseas operations that are expanding. So some under-the-radar businesses that, that many viewers may not have thought of, mm -hmm. uh, businesses like Breville Group, for example. Breville are the appliance makers. Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, their products are very popular in the United States. Now, they don't manufacture in Australia anymore. They manufacture overseas, but they still design here, and their designs are incredibly popular. So as they expand their operations overseas, what we will find is that their revenue, the revenue that they generate from overseas, expands beyond the revenue that they're generating locally. Um, and as they transfer those US dollar revenues to Australia, that buys more Aussie dollars for Australian shareholders. Now, there are some other businesses that are growing overseas, particularly in the United States. Flight Centre is another one, um, and it's going very, very well. The combination of its online business and its bricks and mortar stores seems to be defying the trend to the move to only online, um, and it's working in the United States as well. And then we've got Credit Corp, which is a debt collection business, and it's it's testing the waters in the United States and it seems to be successful in its early stages. So if you believe the Aussie dollar is going to go down, then that, that could, could work for... And presumably a company like Westfield as well. Yes, absolutely. Westfield, any company that's earning revenues in US dollars, mm. when it transfers those dollars back to Australia, if the Australian dollar is lower against the US dollar, well, that's going to be a benefit. And I think it's going to be a permanent one. Many analysts will look through the change in the currency and they'll look at, look at performance on a constant currency basis but I don't think we should be looking at parity as on a con constant currency basis. Mm. All right. Well, let's go back to your favourite not sector, the, yes. the mining services sector. Mm. Now, there are now people talking that really there are now opportunities, buying opportunities. You still don't believe that's, that it's time for that yet? No, I think, I think doing that right now is a little bit like the minnow that fishes for, bait, fishes for food in a bath where the plug's been pulled out uh, and eventually yeah. it'll be sucked down the drain. Um, what we know is that the numbers for these businesses will look good this year. Uh, and they've looked good last year. What we don't know is how they're going to look beyond 2014, and this is the fiscal cliff that we've talked about now for some time. I think what we should be doing is worrying more about what the wider implications are of the, uh, and we talked about this a fortnight ago, of the fallout, the recession that now exists in mining and mining services and the implications for the broader economy. You see, the mining capital expenditure boom that we've experienced contributed about 1.5% to economic growth. And we've just seen in the earlier story that economic growth now sits at just over 2% or 2.5%. And so if we take 1.5% off that, uh, well, we could be looking at recessionary territory. Now, what that means is, and it doesn't look as popular as this program is, it's not the mainstream news that people are hearing and listening to. We're working so, on that, Roger, yeah. Good. Well, <laughs> when the recession word hits the front pages of the of the papers that everyone reads, sure. um, that's when they'll start putting pulling their heads in. And if we don't get residential construction picking up, if we don't get consumption picking up, if we don't get government spending picking up, and they can't afford it... Why don't you think residential construction might not pick up because a lot you of people are looking op optimistically you in that You need confidence. Space. Now, people tell me, Roger, the, the clear auctions clearance rates are going very, very well. Mm. But remember this, people organised their loans back in January and February when the consumer confidence was picking up and it had been picking up since October. Once that R word comes out in the newspapers and the mainstream media, what we're going to find is we're going to find people pulling their heads in and waiting to see whether things improve. And that in itself could slow the economy down. So I don't think those sectors will fill the gap that capital expenditure will leave behind. And so a week and a half ago, sorry, it's now two and a half weeks ago, we sold 
uh, a lot of our exposure to discretionary retail and reduced our holdings in that space, and they've subsequently fallen a lot. Mm. Our resident Cassandra Roger Montgomery, thank you very much for it's joining a us.